Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your favorite baby girl. I'm Kafalabi in the beauty. It's been a long time. Okay, so if you are new to my channel, I'm a BMS based in the bar. <laughs> Sorry about that. If you are new to my channel, I'm a biomedical scientist based in the United Kingdom. I work with the NHS. I talk about how to relocate to the United Kingdom as a biomedical scientist from overseas. I also talk about things revolving around being a biomedical scientist in the United Kingdom. So in today's video, I'll be sharing with you what my typical day looks like. As a biomedical scientist if this is what you're interested in sit down and enjoy today's video if you are here to do this please subscribe to my channel share my videos like my video leave me a comment in the comment section below okay so um i don't know but we have there are um certain similarities to what is obtainable over the world but um i'll be talking about what my day looks like in the lab where I work. So when I get to work, I get to work, um, for now I do morning shift. So I get to work around 8.30 and um, it is expected that once you get to work, you do some housekeeping um, work or let me say maintenance. So the first thing you, you would have to do is to check if any other person is doing one of the maintenance sometimes by the time you get to work someone is already has already started something so let me just assume that i got to I, um let me just assume that okay i'm at work today and just only me at work so sometimes but really the first thing to do is just to clean all the external surface clean the um, keyboard the computer the um, workbench all the surfaces all the external surface i get it cleaned then after that if there's any old form or anything for me to discard i can discard them now the next thing is to go up to the laboratory information management system um, of the lab to check up on any incomplete list what i mean by incomplete list is that any test that has not been completed maybe it was requested um from yesterday overnight maybe during the call hours till that present time any incomplete list in the laboratory I presently i'm in hematology section i've not rotated to coagulation and transfusion section so we check <coughs> if there's any incomplete list the incomplete list is categorized into there might be incomplete list for blood films maybe the doctor requested for blood film you check if there's any any sample any pending work that has not been done the list will be printed out then you would you can check up the position of the sample on the LIMS then you pick out the sample then the next thing is to check if there's an incomplete list for FBC and ESR check if there's incomplete list for malaria check if there's incomplete list for poor bonels and every other test so after checking the incomplete list you print out the incomplete list and it's been it could be it depends but sometimes it could be distributed to different set of people that okay who is doing this who is doing that or you just make an or just tell everyone around that um I've, I've printed out the incomplete list and people just get to do what they can do so that's it so um sometimes i can go ahead to like do the maintenance on the ESR analyzer that we use the stars compact analyzer do the maintenance Do every necessary maintenance depending you know analyzers have different maintenance do the priming check the sensors run the IQC and um, The IQC we do for ESR is the normal IQC in the morning. We do the normal IQC. We do the um, Abnormal IQC later in the afternoon. Yes, so that's for ESR then after then most of the time the person that did on call would have sometimes done the maintenance on the sysmex analyzer that we use for full block count so you might not need to do it and if it has not been done or wherever the person stops you can just continue from that and do it from there and do it and all of that so we run maintenance on all the analyzers we check the temperature of there's a um a software that is used to check the temperature of all the um, the room temperature, the 
all the fridge, all the cabinets, everywhere that needs temperature to be checked on. There's a form of software. So there's a form of small, like a small thermometer. It's not really thermometer. Uh, so that is is attached to the benches, to the rooms, to the to the um, fridge and every other places. So there's now a software that is used to check if all those temperatures are in check. So that's one of the housekeeping jobs that is done in the morning. Then you do all of that, and um, sometimes depending on how much we have to do, I can't really say that okay by this time we are done. We do all of that. Then sometimes the day activities start in between. So if they bring samples from the reception, you check the sample. If the sample meets the criteria for the test that is going that is being requested for for full blood count, you check. Okay, this is in normal vacutina bottle. Is it up to the required meal? For our lab, it has to be between one to four meals. The minimum is one meal. The maximum is four meal for that EDT bottle. So you check if it's um. A pediatric sample you check if it's up to the required meal and you check if the the name of the patient is on the bottle if the hospital number is there if the date of birth is there at least the person should have the name the hospital number of course the lab number will be there yeah so you check all of those parameters you check if the volume is okay you check if the barcode is okay if there's nothing wrong with the barcode everything is in order then the sample is being loaded on the analyzer. So I'm talking about hematology lab now. So most of the time, almost all our samples have FBC. It's only sometimes that, but most of the time, almost all the samples have FBC. The sample that is meant for coagulation will be sent to coagulation and transmission sample. They will get their sample. So, yeah. Then the sample is being loaded on the analyzer. Once it's done with running that particular sample, before you load the analyzer, you know you have checked if it meets the running criteria. Then you mix, you load on the analyzer. Then when it's done, you bring it out of the analyzer. Then it's been taken to the sorter. So what the sorter does is the sorter like separates each sample to, and if the sample does not have any other test, it takes it to um, an archive rack. So where you, you just archive the sample, keep the sample for some number of, depending on how much sample we run, sometimes it's not even up to three days, depending on how long we run the samples. So it's been archived there, or if the sample has HbA1c, it's been archived on the HbA1c rack. If the sample has malaria, poor bonels, maybe sequel tests and all of those um, hemoglobinopathic tests, if, the sample, if that particular sample has one issue, maybe there's a barcode issue, there's error or whatever, the sorter is going to separate the bottles into different, so into the different racks and it would go from there. Any other test that needs to be done will be done. Do you understand? So for now, I've not... Um, got into some other stages in the lab so i'm going bit by bit and one thing about here is that if you are not trained on about something on something is as good as you don't know it or you get you have to be trained you get and you should not do what you are not trained to do so sometimes okay like for example on mondays we usually run the iqc for poor bonnets the weekly um, iqc for poor bonnets is being done on monday but for um, ESR, I think we do the weekly on Thursday. Then for full block counts, for the full block count analyzer, I can't remember when we do. I think the weekly two is Monday. Then comparison test and precision check is being done. Um, one is on Tuesday, one is on Wednesday. So all of that. Now, every result, once the result is normal, most likely the result is just sent back to the requesting physician you get but any abnormal result or any result that the result could be abnormal one the result could be normal but maybe the information the result you are getting at that particular time is not or does not tally with the patient's previous information or patient's previous results the machine will flag it and um, there's a way the system will just sort out any abnormal results or any result that does not tally with the former results of that particular patient. The system will send it forward for 
validation. So the next thing after running the full block counts um, test is for those results that are abnormal or needs to be checked will be sent to for validation. So any no, most times the normal result we don't get to see it. Abnormal result can be just one. There's a way the system has been set to flag or send forward abnormal result for validation. Do you understand? So I've not really gone to the got into that stage of primary validation and secondary validation. But what I know is that when the result is missing for validation, they check the result. Sometimes maybe, for example, if there's low platelet count, they might need to check, okay, is there clot in this sample that maybe there's platelet clump. That's why the platelet count is forcefully reduced. If there's no clot, they might say, okay, let's, they, they might make a film. There's, we have something like a um, action book, so to say. A film will be made and, they, and that particular slide will be checked to see if the platelet count result of the analyzer is really reflective on the film. Do you understand? Maybe there's high lymphocyte count, high whatever, whatever. Now some results are being found out. I've not started phoning our results, but some results are being found out. I know once in my lab, once the hemoglobin result is below, I think 70 grams per day or so, the result will be found out. And there are different results that are being found out. When we have positive pulp or nails, different, different results are being found out depending on the SOP or depending on how it is being stated in the laboratory. So all of these things I mentioned, like we load sample, um, it goes to the sorter rack, if it has to, uh, if it has to, if we have to do ESR or if we have to do any other test on it, the sorter rack is, the sorter would um, sort the samples out, then the next test will be done, we load and all of that. So there are so many things that go on in between all of that, but that's what we do. That's what I do so far. Then I go on break. At least there are two breaks you should go for. You go for your tea break, sometimes between 10 to 11, you go for tea break, which is about 15 to 20 minutes. Then later around, let me say between 12 to like 2. You can like, I mean the starting time should be around between 12 and maybe like 2. You go for your lunch break, which is about 45 minutes. So you know, you need to like refresh yourself relax and all of it because you need to be physically mentally and psychologically fit you need to be okay to do the work you are doing so it's been wonderful so far it's been wonderful so far i don't know maybe um i've said what you like to hear i think i put i posted um something today asking you guys to tell me the kind of video you want me to shoot and someone says she wants to know how my first week or something like that looks like so okay so this is what i've been doing so far if there's need for me to do any other video or do it to let you guys know how it looks like to work in the uk as a biomedical scientist if you are yet to subscribe to my channel please subscribe to my channel share my videos like my videos turn on the bell notification icon if you have not done that and for now, it's a bye from your girl, Alain Gaflabi. Bye!